what's the average mass of one atom of copper? Well, I don't know, but I do know how we can calculate it. You can always convert a number of atoms into a number of moles by taking the number of particles and dividing it by Avogadro's number. That will give you the number of moles that there are in the sample. Then you can convert a number of moles into mass by multiplying number of moles by molar mass, like the mass of one mole. Now, let's plug in the actual numbers here. The number of particles that you're starting with is one single atom of copper. That's your capital N for number of particles. Avogadro's number is 6.022 times 10 to the 23. The units here, because we're counting atoms, is atoms per mole. You'll notice the unit of atoms cancels. You're going to be left with an answer in just moles. Where's my calculator here? We have 1 divided by 6.022 times 10 to the 23. That's 1.6606 times 10 to the negative 24 moles. Can you see that on the calculator? There you go. Now, can you convert that number of moles into a molar mass? Yes, you can, as long as you know how many grams one mole weighs. And luckily for us, we definitely do for copper. It's because we have access to the periodic table and copper weighs 63.546 grams for every mole. 63.546 grams for every mole. So we can multiply that by number of moles to get the total number of grams. Let's do that. Times 63.546. Bam. Oh, I typed plus. I'm a fool. Better get that number again. Times 63.546. Bam. That gives me 1.055 times 10 to the negative 22 grams. That's the number of grams there are in an average atom of copper. Done. Now, if you're feeling cheeky and your teacher doesn't ask you for the mass in grams, just mass, you are allowed to simply say 63.546 AMU. Atomic mass units is a totally valid way to express mass. These are equivalent, but hey, your teacher probably wants to see all that work. This is a risky answer, but hey, you live your life fast. Best of luck.